It's today's collectible spot. We are having a look at the Star Ace, Harry Potter, and the Sorcerer's Stone, Rubus Hagrid, the deluxe version. With the deluxe version, you get yourself Fang, uh, his trusty dog, and uh, in a box, in a suitable fashion, I would say, to the figure itself, box-wise, you get an extremely large box featuring Hagrid inside. On the front box art, you have an image there of Hagrid, looking very proud, I must say. Comes to us from the folks over at Star Ace. As for the back of the box, you've got my favorite movie series, one six scale collectible figure, SA0024 Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, Rubus Hagrid. At the very bottom of that, at the very bottom of the box, you have his Neapolitan Mastiff Fang, his trusty dog. Uh, to check out more from the folks over at Star Ace, you can go to www.starace.com. As this is such a considerably large box, Spot's going to take himself a bit of a longer break than normal. But when we come back, we're going to get a better look at the Star Ace Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, the Rubus Hagrid Deluxe Version 1-6 scale figure. There's more anyway, guys. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. Getting Hagrid out of box. I've already got him displayed here with Fang, which... Obviously, Fang looks so much smaller versus the very giant size, sheer size of Hagrid. Now, just exactly how tall is Hagrid? Now, I could tell you Hagrid is 15.75 inches tall, but now I think we need ourselves a better comparison. There is Hagrid standing next to Harry Potter, one of the other figures that the folks over at Star Ace have produced. Now, this is the smaller, younger Harry, but you can see how much taller Hagrid is versus Harry Potter. Harry only goes to about the elbow or so of Hagrid. A very large standing figure, very imposing standing figure. Before we have a look at the figure, why don't we have a look at Fang? Yes, yeah, because the figure doesn't technically come with a display stand. Normally, this would be a time where Spot would showcase the display stand that comes included with the figure, but nope. Because Hagrid doesn't, let's have a look at his dog, his trusty dog first. Now this is Fang, his Neapolitan Mastiff. Not one of my particular favorite breeds of dog, but uh, very regal style, almost like a Sharpay, I suppose. Big, big collar. I like the collar that they've given him. It looks like it could be removable. I mean, I'm, I wouldn't even venture into trying to take the collar off. I would just leave it be. He also has a chain there as well. Uh, no leash, but it looks like a choker style leash that presumably if he was walking the dog. Really nice paint though on the dog. They've even given a wet, almost like a very wet paint uh, application to the eyes to make the eyes very lifelike looking. It's not just uh, a very dark gray. In fact, if you look at some of the closer hairs on the dog, they've added a lighter wash so those hairs stand out. The paws as well also have a wet treatment given to them. There's the undersides. They've even sculpted the pads, which is something that you probably would not have needed for a dog statue to have. But uh, it's very nice that they would have gone as far as to sculpt the pads on the paws. Now, I say statue. There is no posability to speak of here on Fang. He is completely a staction figure. Which then brings us to the man himself before we show the face on the figure itself. The outfit is really good. Now you may not see all that much right now because he's got his moleskin coat on. But if we just kind of move it out of the way of his beard. I'm not going to pull the jacket completely off. But you can see uh, the, the working of a vest and a very bright, vibrant red shirt underneath. They've got all these little pockets, actually working pockets, I might add as well, on the uh, vest section. He's got a pair of slightly, I would say, more purpley gray style of slacks. And then these very large, very large, look at the size of these boots. I can only imagine the shoeman that would have been responsible, or shoemaker would have been responsible for making the giant pairs of feet, or shoes, for the feet of Hagrid. Having a look at his head, Hagrid's head sculpt is stunning. Stunning head sculpt. It's one of the better head sculpts that Star Ace has put into their Harry Potter lines. The head sculpts are all individually hand-painted as well. And one of the things that you don't get very often with six-scale figures is that the, the hair itself is rooted. 
In other words, if you move the head out of the way, yeah, there are some areas where you can see bare patches, but it's a more cleaner, consistent look to the hair, kind of gives it more of a natural look. Sometimes what uh, with, with some hair, uh, what they do is they only root the front and then they put essentially like a tail, a tail on the underside here. Uh, in this case, Haggard looks like he's got more, more uh, rows, I guess, as you would say, rows of hair that's been rooted into the scalp or top of the head. And I have to say also, it's one of the better hairs. I'm not iffy, or I'm not even iffy. I'm, I'm not f a fan of uh, six scale figures or in this case, Hagrid being a lot taller. I'm not a fan of six scale figures that use real hair. I've never liked real hair. I, if, if you ask me, I, I much prefer more so uh, plastic sculpted hair because that's one thing consistently, it will always look just right. Because the problem with sometimes hair on six scale figures is it ultimately sometimes looks like doll hair and you just can never get it to style properly. Hagrid's hair on the other hand is very, very soft it feels like real hair. It also looks like real hair, and it might just benefit from the fact that I can't imagine Hagrid going to any uh, hairdressers where he's gonna get the, the new style, the new hair trend. Maybe he can benefit the fact that his hair can be a little bit more messy, but it looks like real hair. Something that, if you ask me, a lot of six scale figures don't always get a chance to accomplish. Unlike the head though, the head itself is real, well, not real hair, but it's real in the sense that it's not sculpted hair. The beard on the other hand is sculpted and I'm glad they went this route rather than trying to kind of mimic this down to here. I think the scaling of the curls would be too large that it might look a little silly that I think going the route of sculpted, sculpting a beard, a smarter, smarter way to go. But that is an, uh, just a fantastic head sculpt. This is by far, I really liked, I'm trying to think of all the ones that they've, the Hermione were, was really good. Uh, the Snape was exceptional. This might be my favorite head sculpt. I'm gonna say right now, this might be my favorite head sculpt from all the releases that, uh, that uh, Star Ace has done for Harry Potter. I mean, it's just stunning. It's just an uncanny, just a great likeness. One question you might probably want to ask too is, how does he stand? Sometimes larger figures, uh, larger six scale figures like the Hulk and other large figures don't always stand very well. I don't find Haggard has any real issues where Haggard doesn't, seems to want to topple over. I don't think like the figure needed really a display stand. He stands just fine. The feet are very rooted to the ground, to the surface of your, your display case that I don't, I haven't had any issues where he's toppled over. In fact, he stands a little bit better than some of the smaller scale figures like Harry Potter, for example. But uh, I do really like the outfit. The outfit's quite good. The head sculpt's quite good. Let's have a look at the accessories. For starters, Hagrid comes included with his lamp. Now, the lamp has batteries that have to be installed. That's one thing that they don't include with uh, the figure itself. I unfortunately couldn't get batteries at the time of this review. I wanted to get this review done as soon as I possibly could. I couldn't get batteries, but essentially the little torch inside the lamp would light up. I'm guessing probably closer to, well, it looks like it could be a white light, possibly a yellow light. Some nice aging that they've done to the lamp itself, giving it slightly an oxidized, rusted red coloring, although the lamp itself looks red anyways, but it looks like there's a little bit of aging and weathering and rusting that they've added to it. He also comes included with his wooden crossbow. I do like the grain work that they've added to the crossbow as well. It also has an, an actual uh, elasticized cord attaching the interior there. The crossbow the bow end of it, so to speak, is slightly a, a softer, more malleable kind of material. Like the little bolts and stuff that they've added to the sides. And a little roping around the outside where the bow would have been connected to the main bolt, I guess. Very, very nice though. Also comes included with his pink uh, umbrella. 
The umbrella does not open, it's, uh, it stays completely shut, but it is a material that's been uh, applied as opposed to going the route of sculpting it. I, I don't mind that, I, I like that it's at least a material uh, rather than a sculpt. Nice artwork there on the stem of the umbrella there as well. Very nice. In addition to Fang, he also comes included with Hedwig. Good old Hedwig. Hedwig is painted in a nice, not quite white, more of a creamy colored white with some gray accents in the feathers, piercing yellow eyes, and a very small painted in beak. Much like Fang, it's not poseable in any sort of way. It's just a staction piece. Really good, though. I mean, even the ones that aren't don't have any sort of posability to it. Sometimes those accessories can be the most uh, detailed. And like Fang, I think Hedwig turned out very good. For displaying options, Hedwig also comes included with his cage. And there is a door just on the side here. Like that, you can open that up. Fit little tiny Hedwig, Hedwig inside, just onto the on the to the stand. Close it up, and can be carried by Hagrid. In addition, as well, Hagrid also comes with a series of interchangeable hands. One's hands suited for holding the umbrella, for example. One's holding for the crossbow. One's holding one's suitable for holding the cages and lamps. I never have an issue at all changing out the hands on these guys. Just go ahead and kind of roll up the sleeve on Hagrid. Just go ahead and just wiggle off the hand. And I'm glad that it's not a circular peg. It's more of a kind of like a just a post. Much easier for adding and taking away hands. It's just simply wiggling it back on and you're ready to go. Very likely for displaying options, I might probably just display the figure along with his trusty dog Fang and likely just a a very simple lamp in hand. Of course, including a couple of friends can go a long way as well. When it comes to his posability, Hagrid's head is on a full range of motion via the ball joint that's attaching the head to the torso socket. In addition, it doesn't look like he has any sort of torso crunch, but he does have a waist swivel. Arms move fairly well out a little slightly restricted by the, the movement or the, I guess, the restrictions of the, uh, the shoulder area of the jacket. Um, he does have a hinge in the elbow. Now the hard part, to be honest, because he's a larger figure, is just trying to figure out where the joints are. So the elbow joint is right there, so he has a full range of motion there. Looks like he has only a single hinge, just a single hinge in the elbow area. Not to mention he's got a swivel in his wrists. When it comes to his legs, his legs do surprisingly have a good range of motion as well, forward and back and out. Don't be surprised when you are moving the figure that you do hear, probably hear that little bit of uh, click, not clicking, but motion in the leg sockets as the legs do move forward and back. He does have uh, a double hinge knee and finally a ball joint in the foot. Now what you can also do with the figure too, as indicated in the instructions, you can actually have him sitting down. And you can also bend the legs as if he's actually sitting down. Now, it's not the easiest, I have to admit. One leg is a little easier than others. This one leg here is a little on the stiff side. But you can actually have, there we go. You can actually have Hagrid sitting down. Spot has looked at a lot of the Star Ace Harry Potter figures. It's one of my favorite collections that I've been amassing over the last several little while. Of those figures that we've had a look over the course of these videos, I have to say, I have to say my favorite here is Hagrid. Hagrid turned out so good. He's got the proper size, he's got the proper accessories. I love the inclusion of them giving us Fang with him. He's just really the best figure, if you ask me, of the Harry Potter figures. Of course, you probably will want to get yourself, you know, the, the the actual Harry Potter himself. I think if you're a true Harry Potter fan, you probably will likely get a Harry Potter anyways. You may not gravitate solely just to getting Hagrid. Hagrid would be one that you would be adding on if you probably have been collecting the Harry Potter movies, movie figures. 
but I really feel like this is the defining figure for what Star Ace has been producing for Harry Potter. We will, of course, get more figures down the road. They are not even close to stopping with more future Harry Potter releases, but I really feel like this is the best figure that we've seen from Star Ace. Currently, Hagrid, if you see him online, he's currently on kind of pre-order waiting list. Uh, he hasn't come out yet, but if you do get a chance and you do want to get this guy, don't wait. Try to get him pre-ordered now. Try to get on that waiting list if you can, because he is such a phenomenal figure. Any Harry Potter fan who's been collecting the Star Ace pieces will definitely want to add this guy to their collection. Today's collectible spot, we were having a look at the Star Ace, Harry Potter. Now, this was the Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, but we're looking today at Hagrid. Good old Hagrid. Stay tuned, guys. Spot's going to have more collectible spots heading your way. As always, thanks for watching. See you next time. Just one thing the Spot actually forgot to include when we have a link at the accessories. Uh, Hagrid also comes with an arrow. And that's one thing I forgot to mention when we were having a look at the video. So if you guys are wondering and you thought, hey, wait a minute, I do remember an arrow being included in this set as well. An arrow was definitely included. It was still in the packaging. So hopefully that clarifies everything for you guys. Uh, that Hagrid did in fact come with an arrow for his crossbow. See you guys next time.